When it comes to studying nutrition, there's a lot of information and options out there. So how do you know that what you studied enables you to practice professionally so that both you and your clients are protected? The association previously had a video on this, but it was more from just a fly on the wall meeting. It's time to update this with a more informative and objective approach. We interviewed a number of industry leaders and subject matter experts to understand why adhering to these standards and this structure is so important. If you're spending your time and money on something, it's important that you're getting out of it what you want, right? So what is a hobby course? Before I get into the explanation, we're gonna look at how the term came about. I'm not about taking credit when it's not due, but I'm pretty sure you and I originated, at least popularized the term hobby courses. It would have been around like 2018, 2019. Yeah, I remember um, earlier. So I guess we'll start off by defining what a hobby course is. For me, a hobby course is just a course where there's no formal accreditation, recognition or qualification attached to it. You're just doing it because it's of personal interest or you enjoy it or some people treat them as networking events even. They're cool. There's nothing wrong with a hobby course. The problem with a hobby course is when you think think that it means that you're more qualified. It either comes from the people who are like the course creators, the people delivering the course and, and how they advertise it. But it also comes from the folks who do the course. They do a two-day seminar on blood work and they're a personal trainer and think that they're in a position now to tell clients to go and get their blood sample done. And, mm. oh, yes, I can see here that you're this and this and chin fat to your <laughs> belly fat is off. So you, that means your cortisol. And that's a hobby course. A hobby course is a program with no legitimate registration and insurance afterwards, as well as no formal standardized academic, academic structure. structure. On top of that, there's also no key learning outcomes being delivered by subject matter experts. So who am I and why am I doing this video? My name's Kyle. I'm a voluntary member of the association. I'm a co-founder of the Contest Prep Accreditation Program and I too once created a hobby course. Just so that you're aware, the association is a professional body that happens to also provide a course. The certificate they provide is just one of many ways in which people can register as a professional member with them. So what is the ideal criteria and framework for a legitimate program in sports nutrition? There are 12 to 13 of the following subjects. The lectures are presented by experts in the field who are actually practicing in this space. People who assess the students are actually practicing in it and are also degree qualified. It's regularly audited for standards of quality control and compliance. There are also regular consultations with the subject matter experts experts to ensure that the standard of marking is consistent. The total minimum time required is 360 hours, which breaks down to 30 hours per subject. So what are you getting out of it? Are you coming out of it with legitimate registration and insurance? Do you even know what that looks like? If you don't, then check out this clip from the association's social media account, which explains it pretty simply. Does the type of education provider that they are really matter? Well, not really. Provided they fit the criteria that we've listed previously, that's all that matters. They could be an RTO, a private education provider, a university or a professional body. Provided they're adhering to this criteria, then it's good. There are a number of education providers that the association recognizes for partial and full credit, and we'll be going through some of those in this video. If you'd like to get your program recognized by the association, then keep watching this video and keep the criteria in mind. At this point in time, the criteria comes from insurers, underwriters, compliance agencies, and government commissions, as well as our academic and advisory boards and committees. It's important to understand that the association doesn't make all of the rules, we just uphold the current standards. My name is Tiara Nelson and I studied at the University of Queensland here in Australia. I studied a Bachelor of Nutrition and Exercise Science and a Master's of Dietetics. So in total that took me four and a half years of full-time study. The undergraduate degree of the Bachelor of Nutrition and Exercise Science, that was a three-year degree. And then the Master's of Dietetics was a one and a half year degree. In your opinion, based on your experience, why are these subjects so foundational to effective practice for people as opposed to what say trending, whether it be like learning about hormones or, yeah. you know, just any, any sort of trending topical subject that you might see in a hobby course. Absolutely, yeah, because there, there definitely is a big difference. When you look at it at face value, they're all going to teach you, okay, what is the how, the why, and the what of what essentially you're trying to learn. You might learn about metabolic adaptation. That's the what. But then if you were to undertake just a hobby course, for example, they might be, you know, something just simply over the weekend, or, you know, you might do a few course modules online. The how could be, well, how does metabolic adaptation occur? You just move less. 
And why? So that the body can conserve energy. Like you might just learn it just at that level and mm. it stops there. And that's not inherently wrong, but as we know, there's a hell of a lot more to it than just that. What is metabolic adaptation? How does metabolic adaptation occur? So yes, your body might move less, but how metabolic adaptation actually occurs is that, you know, you have a suppression of your endocrine and your reproductive and your immune function. You learn all of the actual like nitty gritty. I was having this discussion with my partner earlier on today about those people who know the theory and maybe they don't even know the theory that that much in depth it's kind of that old analogy of you know that the teacher who's one chapter ahead in the textbook versus the person who has a lived experience of the area that they're teaching if you have a health condition and you can find a practitioner who is really well qualified and they have the condition they're probably the best practitioner because they've dealt with it in patients they know the theory they've also dealt with it themselves so they have such a deep understanding of it in sports nutrition, it's the same thing. You know, you have experts who have been well published, very knowledgeable, but they're also athletes and yeah. they work with athletes. I mean, that that's where the magic happens, right? The golden triangle, yeah. That's the very middle of that Venn diagram of, of, of practitioner efficacy. I think that especially working in the competition prep space and particularly working alongside female athletes and having that underlying understanding of human physiology, reproduction, you know, like the importance of eating for health and performance, but also like just thriving as a human being. That really helps me then in within my practice. Like I don't let little things slide because I have that education behind me, me being able to actually explain the importance of why we're doing certain things and why we can't just take a very flexible IFFYM approach for six months of a prep and rather we do need to be on more of a set plan that's really putting an emphasis on micronutrient rich foods that really helps with their buy-in and they're like ah okay I get it right even though just following a macros diet that sounds cool probably not gonna you know end up in a peak state of health <laughs> or just not really near healthy at all when I really wrap this thing up at the end of prep you need to have a certain critical mass of knowledge and understanding to to be in that starting point of safety and efficacy where you can then go into practice and then you continue to learn and grow and which is mean, also an important thing right for accredited members of the SNA they're having to do CPD and which that's is really like we, like we pushed them as the core stuff, but we're not the ones that just plucked them out of thin air and said, hey, this is our opinion. It comes from a lot of different modalities, from compliance to insurers, to underwriters, to uh, talking with the board and saying, how can we make it better? You know, th there's a number of things that we consider and we're, we're really just facilitating what we get instructed or told to do in most instances. It's also common sense. Yeah, yeah. Because if someone or a group of people with a good combined knowledge of what it requires to be in practice sit down and say, well, you know, what are the bare essentials that someone needs to be a safe and effective practitioner? They'll come up with very, very similar lists of subjects and core material because they know it, they've lived it, they've done it, right? I can tell you what someone requires to be a good sports nutritionist or a good clinical nutritionist. That really comes through in curriculum. And so it's something that you're right, it's required by regulatory bodies, it's required for insurance, but it, it, it is that because it's grown over time as people improve their knowledge of this area. And we build a compendium of knowledge that we can say, hey, this is really what you need to be a safe and effective practitioner. I want to make it clear that I'm not saying that all hobby courses are shit. And I want to make it also clear that I've done a lot of hobby courses and many of them have been not only not useful, but actually detrimental. In like 2016 or something, I freaking did Poliquid Biosignature, thinking that that was amazing and awesome and I used to call myself a Holocrine biosignature practitioner and I thought I'm qualified to do this. So it's not like I have fallen victim of that bullshit either. It comes from a place of not only being frustrating because from realizing that it's all crap, but also being frustrated because I spent the money time on those things too. And I thought they were legit. The biggest difference between hobby courses and accredited courses is that because the accredited formal courses, they have legal things to consider, they have scope of practice things to consider, they cover the boring stuff that you need to know to keep people safe, which the hobby courses are so focused on the topics that are marketable. So let's have a look at the current programs within the regions in which the association currently operates. Now, before we do, it's important to keep in mind these reviews are based purely on the information we have available to us at the time. So from things like websites, social media platforms, and information packs that we've received. Vast Fitness Academy. Subjects. We had to dig a fair bit for these. Total hours, undisclosed. It's a 12 month maximum self-paced program, whatever that means. Lecturers, undisclosed. We have third party reports that it's based on. 
one large text being completed. Assessors, full-time people, are they practitioners? Unlikely. Application and PRAC, undisclosed. Third-party compliance auditors and SMEs, undisclosed, but they are an RTO, so it could be there. Registration and insurance, yes, but as a nutrition coaching advisor, which is really interesting, as when we look at a number of the policies recommended by some of these hobby course providers, we found that the activities the professionals think that they are covered for, and have even been told verbally that they will be covered for, does not match. Even contradicts what is in the fine print of the policies. Terminology, as a nutrition coaching advisor, and some additional notes, always advertising sales that never end. So if you want to study with them, just know there's no pressure. There'll always be another sale the very next month. But depending when you study with them will dictate how much you save. So students enrolling at the end of financial year will pay way less than the other months, which is interesting. They infringe on our mark of accredited sports nutritionist and the goodwill we've built with the title in their marketing. And finally, they link with a supposed professional body, but in order to be a professional body in Australia, it's a requirement you're a non-for-profit and disclose your figures annually. And for all of our efforts, we couldn't find them. Whereas the association produces these annually for public disclosure, as well as does videos on this each year for the members. Women's Fitness Academy, subjects, five to six units, and some more on this later. Total hours, undisclosed, lecturers, some degree in tertiary qualified professionals, assessors, undisclosed, application and prac, undisclosed, third party compliance auditors and SMEs, undisclosed, registration and insurance, apparently has insurance, terminology advisor, additional notes, having non dietitians being taught subjects about nutrition considerations with cancer, bariatric surgery, etc. These subjects and their practice are reserved almost exclusively for specialist doctors and dietitians in the field. Recon Nutrition Pro ISSN in Australia. I'll refer to this further on in the USA region. Subjects, none. Total hours, undisclosed, unlisted, about 10 weeks. Lecturers, none. Assessors, none. Application and prac, none. Third party compliance auditors and SMEs, none. Registration and insurance, none. Terminology, none. Clean health. Subjects, undisclosed. Total hours, undisclosed and unlisted. Lecturers, Dr. Lane Norton. Assessors, undisclosed. Application and PRAC, undisclosed. Third party compliance auditors and SMEs, undisclosed. Registration and insurance, none unless you use their meal planning software. Terminology and additional notes. These are clearly short hobby courses and can be great foundations and introductions. It'd be nice to see more transparency around the need for the software to practice with cover. AIPT, Diploma in Nutrition. Subjects, 12, total hours, undisclosed. Lecturers, undisclosed. Assessors, undisclosed. Application and practice, it's listed and it's decent. Third party compliance auditors and set SMEs, undisclosed. But being an RTO, this should occur and chances are they have it. Registration and insurance, undisclosed and listed. Terminology, nutrition coach or advisor. In New Zealand, we have the HPI. If you choose sports nutrition, you're completing the same 12 subjects with similar assessments and similar deliveries, meeting all the registration criteria. They also have the Nutrition Institute. Subjects, 12, four that are relevant for sports nutrition. Total hours, undisclosed. Lecturers, listed and qualified professionals. Assessors, undisclosed, but they could very well be the lecturing team, and that's good. Application and PRAC, it's listed and decent. Third party compliance auditors and SMEs, undisclosed. Registration and insurance, not disclosed. Terminology, nutritionist as an unprotected title. Additional notes, good value for money for learning from legitimate people. Keep in mind, you'll most likely not be eligible for registration with any clinical or sports nutrition or dietetic association with this. In the USA, we have the NCI. Subjects, just says science one and science two, then application. Total hours, undisclosed. Lecturers, two listed and no formal qualifications listed for these. Assessors, undisclosed. Application and PRAC, undisclosed. Third party compliance auditors and SMEs, undisclosed. Registration and insurance, none that we could find. Terminology, nutrition coach. Additional notes include subjects such as gut health, hormones, HPA access, etc. And these are subject areas that, to our knowledge, the only professionals with the scope to operate in this space are specialized dietitians and doctors, such as endocrinologists. I don't know of any professional who has anything less than a master's degree in those fields being able to operate in this space legally. NAMS. Graduates of this program receive eight out of 12 subjects credit. This program delivery for the eight subjects meets all of the criteria assessed and is delivered by Dr. Joe Klemzeski. Asia, we have the GPNI, formerly the ISSN Asia. 
Subjects undisclosed, total hours undisclosed, lecturers listed and qualifying, delivered by some top experts. Assessors, it's just an exam, so no assessments with feedback, so to speak. Application and PRAC, undisclosed. Third-party compliance auditors and SMEs, undisclosed. Registration and insurance through the IICT, the International Institute of Complementary Therapies, which is interesting as sports nutrition is not a complementary therapy or therapeutic in nature. And this is another instance where the policy schedule is not covering the activities the professionals think they are covered for. Personalized nutrition, which is a one-on-one -on -one service, is not covered. Terminology, sports nutritionist, some additional notes. There's some great people teaching this program and it's available in multiple languages. In Europe, we have the IOPN Graduate Diploma in Applied Performance Nutrition. Now, being that this is a post-graduate program with six specialized subjects, the foundational science subjects aren't covered. Graduates of this program only, so they haven't completed a science undergrad, will receive credit for nine out of the 12 core subjects required to register and practice with the association. Graduates who have completed a nutrition science undergrad will receive full credit. Subjects, six subjects, which are quite detailed. Total hours, approximately 18 months. Lecturers listed and qualified. Assessors, well-qualified practitioners and professionals. Application and PRAC, six primary in-depth specialized case studies. Third-party compliance auditors and SMEs, undisclosed, but will occur internally as they are a registered higher education institution. Registration and insurance, not included but as many available pathways with us and other associations. Terminology, sports nutritionist. And finally, we have MNU. This is a basic diploma program. Subjects, there's six subjects in total, no foundational sciences, one in sports nutrition, and some on chronic health condition management, which is interesting for insurance and scope considerations. Total hours, 12 months, self-paced but undisclosed. Lecturers listed and qualified. Assessors listed and qualified. Application and PRAC, undisclosed. Third-party compliance auditors and SMEs, undisclosed. Registration and insurance. Insurance, yes. Registration, no. And the insurance's legitimacy is most regions is questionable. Without there being a regional office that provides regionally specific scope, and with the chronic health condition management that's taught, given these are activities reserved for dietitians and doctors exclusively. Terminology, MNU nutritionist. Now you know what to look out for. Not all hobby courses are bad. We just want you to be aware so that you can make the best informed decision for yourself and so that you and the public are protected. And for those of you that want to know how to get your program recognized by the association, check out this interview that I did with Alex. Just to make it easy for everyone, if, if I was a course or education provider, how would I get in contact with you to align my course with you guys to make sure that we can work together collaboratively to, towards getting that goal in place of mm. how do we how do we ensure the sustainable prosperity of, of everyone? Yeah, I mean, great question. And this is definitely something that we want to have more people aware of, right? But the first thing is just reach out to us. You can contact us at assessor at sportsnutritionassociation.com. We'll send you through a form that you'll fill out where you'll break down the skeleton of your program. And like what we assess in the video and what we assess from a compliance perspective, We've got these 12 core subjects, 12 to 13 core subjects. We've got the learning outcomes. We've got the total time. We've got who it's delivered by. We've got who it's assessed by, compliance, auditing, all that stuff. And as long as it ticks those boxes, then we can recognize. And if it doesn't, we'll give you feedback on it. And we'll point you in the direction of people that can help you get you to that point where we can. And then, yeah, we can work with you. And we'd love to work with you as long as you value that stuff. And we can tick these boxes and you are prepared to be flexible for when regulatory change comes through, whether it's from a national commissioner from a specific region that, that relates to your region that you're in, or whether it's a underwriting or insurance piece of feedback, or even for just from the board or committees, we need to be flexible based on that information that we're going to get and feedback when you get from them. And as long as you're ticking those boxes and open to feedback and being flexible, then we're good to go. People think that we don't want to work with other providers. The truth is we absolutely do. We just want to work with the ones that actually value what we're trying to do and aren't for, focused on short-term money and trying to capitalize on a market they perceive to be there that really is only there because we lost money for five to six straight years. For anyone looking at registering with the association, go to www.sportsnutritionassociation.com for more information about becoming a professional member. For those wanting to study the certificate, click the Enroll Now button on the same website and make sure you're following the association's social media accounts, subscribing to the YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the latest information. I just want to personally thank all of our guests for contributing to this video and helping to get some more objective information out into the industry. You can find all of their social media handles in the description.